Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio. Today I'm sharing with you a, a speed up version of these watercolor abstracts I did on the Art Joy of Sharing live stream show on Thursday. And the first thing I'm doing here is some preparation work that is kind of necessary to do when you're working with watercolor. I have 300 pound watercolor paper and I cut it my sheet down into two six by six pieces to work on during the live stream. And then I took a sponge roller and I made a light coating of water on both sides of the paper and then taped it down to something rigid. And this is the, the um, thing that I use for putting my gel plate on. It's like a piece of, um, uh, what's that stuff called? It's acrylic stuff that you can buy at the hardware store. And then I wanted to um, have some white space and some abstract uh, design on these. And so I did use some frisket. Now my frisket is, is um, this stuff does not last on the shelf. It's too old. Uh, I bought it as a needle tip and I used it once and then I threw it in the drawer and the needle tip isn't working. It's all clogged up. And um, in fact, the whole thing is gummy and gross. So I would not recommend uh, using old frisket, but that was all I had. Had I realized that I was going to need it, I would have got some, you know, new. And I applied it with a bamboo skewer because you don't want to get frisket uh, on your brushes because they will gum up and you won't be able to use them anymore. So you try to do something either with like a really old brush that's cheap and you don't care about throwing it away or else like something that's made out of wood works well like this. So I'm just applying it and it will, once it's dry, it will mask the paper and leave those areas once it's removed as white space. Because, you know, I, I do struggle with wanting to paint every single space on everything that I make completely with color. So I wanted to try frisket. It has other uses besides this, like um, keeping something clean that you want to have as a focal image later. And, you know, painting your whole background and then removing the frisket and working on your, your focal image like that. But I have two of these. And you will see me switching back and forth. The reason that I'm doing this is because really watercolor products should be allowed to dry on the paper by themselves without heating. Also, it's not a good idea to heat frisket, especially not with a heat tool. And I don't really have like a cool heat tool. Mine's an embossing one. And so I don't, I can't dry these in between. And of course, it, if it's during a live stream, plus I'm an impatient person. And so I just wanted to be able to switch back and forth and let one dry while I was working on the other one. So the products I'm using today are Brusho. Um, that's a powdered pigment that's like crystallized. I also have some Ken Oliver Color Burst, which is a similar product. It's, it's a fi finer powder but it is a powder that's like really pigmented so much so that this stuff will stain your skin. It will, um, if you put it on a lay as a layer underneath and then you try to cover some of it up with gesso or acrylic paint, it will creep through. Um, it's, it's intense, intense pigment. The other one that I, you'll see me using is the Lindy's Magicals powder. And that's a shimmery one. It's like a mica powder that has more than one color in it so it kind of has that color shift situation going on. Uh, the brushos and the Ken Oliver also have blended uh, pieces of pigment like as you see me put that that uh, that one's supposed to be yellow ochre but it had turquoise it had red um, it had different colors so I'm trying different methods of application uh, the first, the first ones that I did, I used as a wash. So I put, I used my wash brush there that's on the right, put some water on, and then I sprinkled the pigment on. And then I kind of smooshed it around where I wanted it. Um, the sec, this other method is to sprinkle the powder on first and then spritz it with water. 
and uh, let it blend that way. That one is the sepia toned one from the Ken Oliver. So it's kind of, it's a warm brown color, but it also has uh, blue and uh, red in it as well. So they're interesting. You get a lot of color action and a lot of blending and interesting um, watercolor effects using these because of the way they're created. So this next one I'm using, I think it's uh, purple, maybe a purple, or that might be the indigo one, dark blue, I can't remember. But anyway, um, I put water down in this corner and then on the other corner I sprinkled it and spritzed it just so that you can kind of see that you get a different effect. And, and then I'm kind of blending out in, in certain places with uh, my round brush, which is a number eight, Princeton um, red sable brush, probably synthetic sable, I'm guessing, but it's probably my favorite brush that I have made by Princeton. I also have some pretty, ni pretty nice ones that are made by uh, Urect, but this Princeton is an 8 and my Urex are a 10 and a 12, so a little bit bigger. So for something this small, it seemed like a good idea to use the smaller brushes, with the exception of the wash brush, which is a um, Zen uh, Langnickel, uh, what's the, you know, those guys, Langnickel guys. <laughs> so now I'm getting out the Magicals. And instead of putting them um, down as a powder, I'm using the lid to the Magical and just getting a little bit of water on my brush and um, using it that way. I decided with my two pieces that I would use warm colors with maybe just a little bit of a cool color as an accent and then cool colors with the opposite, of course, of course obviously, um, on the other one. So I've got uh, some orange and some pink and some red from these magical colors. And I think they're in the bouquet set, I think. They come as a set of five. You can probably buy them individually, but when I got them several years ago, probably at least five years ago, uh, I bought the little tubes with five colors. So I think these three are from one set and then maybe the other ones that I use on the other one are from a different set, maybe. But I'm doing some mark making. I'm doing some uh, smooshing the colors around, trying to get them to blend with each other and then using the different color pots and just, you know, having some fun. So the one that I got out this time, this was my very favorite one back when I used to use the Magicals all the time. It's called Tibetan Poppy Teal. And I just think it's a great color. So I wanted to use that one. I'm also sometimes hitting the brush and letting it splatter. I'm, uh, I've got three different pots of water. And the first one is for rinsing the dirtiest brush. And then the second one, I rinse it a little bit more. And then the third one is only for dipping in and getting fresh, clean water so that I'm not muddying any pigments. So Tibetan poppy teal, it's a nice one. Then um, this little plastic palette, I have put some of the, I think it's mostly brushos. There might be also be a Ken Oliver in there. Um, and just put a couple drops of clear pot powder, uh, put the powder and then put a couple drops of clear water in there and mixed them up to make them like a liquid watercolor. So you can do that too. Um, and that's what I'm using to finish these off. It's a lot of fun. A little bit of splatters, a little bit of splashes. Sometimes you can put, uh, splashes of water on there and then sop them up later. I have some tissues to try to keep from the puddling going on. Um, part of preparing in the paper is to stretch it um, so that it doesn't buckle and cause puddles because that's the most annoying thing. You're trying to make this beautiful uh, flat piece and the paper swells on one side and causes buckling and then you get places where the water and the pigment want to pool and that's what I'm trying to avoid by putting water on both sides of the paper and taping it down and all that stuff you know so that I don't get the buckling in the, the puddles 
So I think I've got out some, uh, I think this, this magical color was called something about leaves, you know, fall leaf type color. And I put some of that on and then I'm also using the ones that are in my palette, making a few more marks and some splatters. And then um, I need these to dry. Of course, ideally I would have set them aside overnight to let them completely dry, but of course I couldn't do that. So I messed with some other things during the live stream. I made some little three dot flower collage fodder, which, you know, nothing special, just a little bit more watercolor things. But then I came back to these and they weren't 100% dry, but they were dry enough that I could remove the frisket. The best thing to remove the frisket is your fingers. Uh, something about your finger rolling over it will help it come off, but it does hurt your fingers a little bit if you do it for too long. So I was using, I was trying first to use my rubber cement remover, but it didn't seem to be working. And so I used a, um, an eraser that has kind of a crumbly texture and that helped me get it started. Uh, because the paper is not completely dry, I did rip in a couple places. Also, I ripped in a couple places when I took the tape off. But you can see that mostly the areas where the frisket were is white. Although, because things were not dry when I was rubbing, so I got a few dark streaks that I didn't appreciate. So I decided instead of going 100% watercolor here that I would do just a tiny bit of mixed media on this one. So I got out a few pieces of paper from my basket of scraps that were sitting next to me and I made a few little collage pieces to glue on there. And uh, one of them is like a fluorescent pink paper, painted paper. And then the other one, it was a little dictionary uh, paper scrap. So using a little bit of the the idea of graphics from uh, writing or typing, which I enjoy. And I just glued them down with glue stick. <laughs> I didn't want to get into a whole fluid media situation where I might smear the watercolor as I was trying to apply the collage. So I just put uh, the glue stick, the Yoohoo glue stick on the back of the paper. They're small pieces and I'm not too worried about it. I think they'll be fine. And I glued them down. And then I just used a light yellowy orange on this one. Um, I was looking for my, my paintbrush, my favorite paintbrush. And I just kind of blended in the pieces using that yellowy orangey color to just, and I went over some of the white dots and made them a little bit less stark and just kind of messed around till I was happy with it. And then I gave it a good dry with my heat tool. Now that the frisk gets off there, I could dry it. So I did. Then just because I had those kind of colored streaks where I, where my finger rubbed over the frisket that wasn't clean because it had wet still on top of it, I didn't like those streaky bits. And so I used a white Posca pen, which is a, a pretty opaque white pen to just kind of touch up some of those white spaces and to make some marks as well here and there. Now, like I said at the beginning, these pigments are intense and where I'm like splattering or marking over the top of the pigment, I already know that the, that, that white is gonna be dulled with the color underneath because it's gonna bleed through, but you'll still be able to see it. It'll be like a pastel version of what's underneath. So the marks will still show. They just won't be as intensely white as they are when you first put them down. Of course, where the frisket was is just bare paper. So when I put it on there to touch up those dark spots, I can get it, you know, the white will be white, but then uh, over the tops of the colored areas, it will not. So now I decided to go ahead and do the other one, even though I really felt like I should just leave it to dry more, but it was a live stream show and um, I was needing to have things to show on my live stream show with Peg, of course, it's the Art Joy of Sharing live stream channel 
We live stream every Thursday at um, 9.30 Mountain, 10.30 Central, 8.30 Pacific, 11.30 Eastern, and wherever it is that you are. <laughs> um, this time I was smart and I used my heat tool to remove the tape around the edge so that I would not uh, tear the edge. As I'm looking at these, I think that what I will do probably with them, I, at first I was just making abstract paintings and I do have an extra six by six frame and I thought maybe I would just frame one of them and put it on the wall. But then I realized that in February I have three different birthdays um, that are coming up like right one after the another. And I do have some six by six envelopes. So what I was thinking is I might trim them down a little bit, put them on a six by six card, and then make it, make birthday cards out of them. Um, I think I can do that with them. So that's probably my plan. So this one, I added some collage with just like tissue paper. I had this... Uh, very watery looking piece of tissue paper that had pink, purple, and blue circles on it. And so I just tore some of those and then I intentionally, as I was gluing them down, kind of wrinkled them up to give them a little bit of texture. So when you look at the close-ups, you'll see that those pieces are a little bit wrinkly. Um, intentionally did that. So it didn't give as much texture as I had thought it would, but it did give some. Same process, I'm using the Yoohoo glue stick to attach them. And I've got a bit of purple, a bit of pink, a bit of blue here and there. And then I'm uh, using these watercolors in the palette to kind of go around them and blend them in a little bit. Or in this case, it really kind of made them stand out more rather than blending them in. <laughs> but I liked the effect, I thought it was interesting. So, um, I added some more white on this one, I think, with the white pen after I dried it, just to kind of touch up. I was trying to touch up the corner where that indigo is, and it just kept smearing and making it worse. Um, it's where it, the indigo bled through under the tape, so it doesn't have a perfect frame. So it would be good that I can trim this down and mounted on something else to make a card. So I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, these watercolors um, all through the month of February 2022 we'll be doing watercolor water soluble media hashtag AJOS um, watercolor in our art joy of sharing art community so sure be sure to play along and uh, like subscribe comment share sign up for my membership all those things that's it for me thanks bye bye